Hi guys, and we are back. So we were just finishing part, the part talking about the letter F. Um, I think I was going to bring this up in T for ton, but there's another step which is ton de flesh. So um, yeah, we'll talk about that later, but flesh being arrow. Okay, so remind me. <laughs> I don't quite know how you're going to manage that, but remind me, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so we're on to um, G now. Um, good. If there are any that aren't mentioned in this video that uh, you suddenly think of and you want the pronunciation for them done properly, then just pop them underneath and I'll just do a little attachment video, okay? Um, uh, and do the rest of them. Right, on we go. G. Right. Grand and grande. So this sometimes confuses people because as standard in English, we have a tendency to pronounce the consonants. So for example, we tend to say Paris, you know, uh, honest, you know, we, we, we pronounce consonants quite hard. Okay, that's what we will do. So naturally reading G-R-A-N-D in English would give us grand. Yeah, okay. Grand is the masculine, grande is the feminine. So within ballet, you have grand before something or grande, depending if it's a male or a female thing that would come next. The tendency um, uh, is just to say grande, which is kind of an anglified version of gr the grande. So grande plie, grande. There's no French word grande. Okay, so grand, grande. Yeah, um, whatever. So large, a larger version of whatever you're doing. Plié, demi-plié, grand plié, you know, petit allègre, grand allègre, you know. Again, grand, grand, okay? Um, lovely, all right? Grand pas, whatever, big step, you know, when someone does an impressive little part of the performance, you know, a, a tour de force, lovely. Um, Glissé, glissé. Now this comes up in two locations: Gli a glissade, which is a, you know, a travelling movement, very commonly done in petit legro. You know, particularly, it doesn't have to be, but you know, to the side, to the side, um, um, which is relying on the idea of the verb glissé, glissé, glissade, glissade. So in French, glissade in English, glissade, glissade, um, uh, which is to slide, slip, slide. And then we have glissé, which is a movement, one of our movements when you are on your supporting leg and how that foot is coming away from, you know, where you are. Um, so that is another movement not to be confused. Both of them are relying on the fact that glissé means to slide or slip in French. It's completely one of those that is still used all the time, particularly, obviously, in winter when it is wet, cold and slippy. So, for example, be careful, it's slippy. Attention, ça glisse. Yeah, I slid under something. I slipped under something. Alors, je me suis glissé, you know, into the crowd or, you know, under the sheets or something. You know, glissé, you know, to slip, slide. Completely, completely common modern French. All right. Good. The next one is a kind of a random one with a G. Um... Uh, gargouillade, gargouillade, yeah, gargouillade. So basically, to gurgle, like when a sink is making a noise, when there's some, you know, random gurgling going on um, from the water. So people often mistranslate this and sort of say gargle, um, but it's actually the kind of, so Gargouillade in, in, in um, ballet is, and perhaps the best example I can think of, is if you watch the Sugar Plum Fairy. So, one of the movements that she does is this cute little fairy jumping step where she jumps in the air, she'll run one leg and round the other leg, she'll tick -a -tick -a -tick, one leg, the other leg, one leg, the other leg. And it is possibly the ugliest thing in the entire world, unless done very properly and nicely. Um, there is a dancer who is at the Royal Ballet called Lauren Cuthbertson, um, 
who's amazing when we talk about illness and we talk about people not being well, because she came back from, um, I think it was ME. Um, yeah, I used to know her brother um, and his then girlfriend. And um, yeah, I just remember being so inspired when he was like, oh, you know, she's not very well, she's doing this. And he was a dancer before her, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he taught at boys, London Boys Ballet School for a little bit. Um, yeah, um, but hardcore, that to me is 10 times more impressive than somebody who's just always being well, somebody who's fought back. But if you want to see something beautiful, uh, any time you watch anybody from France or England or America or anything doing anything, you can guarantee that there will be a sea of YouTube comments underneath from somebody who's like, it's not like the Russians. And I'm like, yeah, sometimes. But this, I just think she's absolutely, you know, I just think it's the prettiest, um, you know, sugar plum I've ever seen. So the gargouillard is like this brrr, brrr, little movement where the legs sort of go around one way, round the other way. You know, so it's basically jump one leg one way, one leg the other way. It's really random. I guess a fairy would do this. It's not what people tend to do. So this is coming from the verb gargouiller, which is basically to gurgle, like the noise that you would make when water was under, you know, like a sound coming from something, all right? Very, very random, but not a verb you would need in a hurry, all right? Next up, we have, uh, so grand, grand, glissa, glissé, gargouillard, H, letter H, O, yeah, O. Um, so, uh, Hi. You come across O oh, quite a lot um, in like other words in French, don't you? Like high fashion, like haute couture, so haute couture or haute cuisine, haute cuisine or this kind of business. So you might occasionally hear like en haut in relationship to the sort of placement and, you know, a high fifth or something, you know. So that's high. Not a super, super, super common word, but it's used. Good. We then have... Um, I've already spoken about I, the letter I, when we have yem. Yeah, so um, deuxième, troisième, quatrième. Um, we'll talk about second as opposed to um, deuxième in a minute, but yem. So that is the s. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, yem. We've spoken about yem. Next up is J, and we have a very common mispronunciation, which is basically... I always mispronounce the word mispronunciation. It just takes away all... Why would you listen to me? Why would you listen to me? Um, we have uh, jeté. Did you hear what I just said? Jeté. What do we normally say in English in ballet? Jeté. Do you want to jeté from the corner? Grand jeté or something like that. So jeté is a really rather interesting verb because... Or a noun. Because as it's said in French, I can hear the water coming down the pipes. That's really loud. We've just spoke about gargouillard, there you go. God, that's really loud. Um, screw it. The show must go on. Um, so the verb to throw, and there are other verbs, lancer in all of this business. Jeter is a really, 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 really commonly, 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 commonly mispronounced verb in French. Because it is J-E-T-E-R, so jeter, like I, je, yeah, jeter. But when you conjugate it and go into the short form, you say jet, je jette. So for example, I'm going to throw the ball, alors je vais jeter la balle, the small ball, or le ballon, as we said earlier. Or, j'ai, so je vais jeter, or I'm throwing the ball, je jette, I don't know why I'm doing that, I'm a lefty, je jette, uh, whatever. So that means then that if you have a pronunciation of this word where you, you're not giving the short form, like I throw, you know, je jette, where you actually gain an extra T, J-E-T-T-E, your standard pronunciation of the verb is jeter. So therefore the noun would be a jeter, not a jeter, okay? Make of it what you will. Take what you want from the proper French. Your choice, dancers. Jeté is basically a jump. Yeah, so we have sauté that we'll come to in a bit. There's all kinds of jeté, petit jeté, jeté battu, grand jeté. You know, 
loads and loads and loads, but it's basically a, a, a jump. It's, you know, normally involves like a weight transfer rather than in its place. Well, I don't know, but um, yeah, this, it is a form of a jump. It is a thrown step. Yeah. Um, good. Lovely. Uh, lovely. Next one. This might surprise you. Leotard. Leotard. From, I think he was French. I don't think he was Belgian. Uh, it's Monsieur Leotard, who I think was commissioned to invent um, uh, like a tight body stocking for um, um, sir, a circus. Um, oh no, so a Leotard is a unisex skin tight one piece garment. That covers the torso from crotch to the from the crotch to the shoulder. The garment was made famous by French acrobatic performer Jules Leotard. There's where Leotard comes from. There's an amazing YouTube channel by a girl called Claudia Dean, who is such lovely energy. She'd been, I think she got as far as soloist at the Royal, and then for various reasons wanted to go back. And she's ace, but in the Aussie way that they kind of give everything a diminutive and shorten things. I've heard her call leotards you Leo. <laughs> I think that's so cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are other words in French for leotard, ironically, we'll say juste au corps, yeah, juste au corps, you know, um, but um, generally leotard. So French word you might not have realised was from French. Leotard. Next up, we're up as far as L, J, K, L. Um, uh, Oh yeah, so again, this will come up with ton, but ton lié, so ton lié. So like a linking step. So if you think we spoke about our chasse, when we basically got our feet in a position, and then on a kind of plié and a bent leg, we're gonna kind of slide our leg into a position, we're gonna chase the foot. Um, ton lié, a ton is a count, a time, lié is linked. So ton lié would be kind of like you're in one position, okay? You're then going to basically place your foot in the position it needs to be in, you know, and then you've got this gentle plié, and then you change of weight, a change of weight into your new position. It's so like a linked step between the two positions, all right? Uh, good. Lié is a super, super, super common word in French. It is still means, this, this is lié, like hair tied back, lié, attaché. Um, very linked to something, a link on the internet, un lien, un lien, L-I-E-N. Um, liaison is from the same thing. You might have come across the play or the book, uh, um, the play or the film Dangerous Liaisons. Um, yep, uh, watch it otherwise. Um, yeah, se lier à quelqu'un, to kind of, you know, get involved with somebody, become friendly with somebody, you know, lier, lier, lier. Uh, start hanging out with somebody, lié. Very, very, very common. All right, good. Next letter is M. So M for me, uh, we're going to talk about manège, manège. Now, a manège, okay, is not a menage, okay? That's all I'm going to say now. Manège, menage. We'll talk about, you know, the difference. Or ménage in French. So manège is basically what in England would be called a Luke, don't say the C word, say the merry-go-round, and in, in America, a carousel. Um, and that thing, like where, you know, little pretend horses go round and round and round. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So when you do something, you know, on manège, you are basically doing, like, for example, a turning step, more than one person, you know, you are going round and round in the circle which is obviously quite attractive. So that is manège. So that's your word for, you know, um, that shape of movement, uh, that shape in, 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 in French. The same word is used in horse riding, actually, my other hobby, um, when you are in the school, what is like the yard, the school of the horse, as in the place where you will have an arena and the horse can go round and round and round. It's a bit lazy riding to do it. Um, uh, yeah, that is also a manège, okay? So manège, uh, school, riding school, ring, you know, um, uh, uh, it's also like 
your little game, the thing that you sent somebody on, like I more than understand your trick, what you're attempting. Yeah, your little, you know, trying to misguide us and take us round, but that's not super, 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 super common. Okay, lovely. Okay, um, if you then switched manage round to menage, okay, you then have um, another word, which is unbelievably freaking common in French. And this is what confuses people. In fact, I've often heard in English writing, people refer to a menage um, because of other etymologies of this word. So menage is anything to do with your domestic situation. So menage à toi, let's just say it's a relationship involving three people, in case there's young people watching this. You know, um, faire le ménage is to do the housework, you know, déménager, there you go again, we've got that dé preposition, so to dis-move, in other words, move house, éménager, into the moving, so to move in. You've got all of this, somebody's ménage is their private life, you know, all, all of this stuff. So ménage is super, super, super common and useful in French, okay? Um, I have an oat cake related injury <laughs> in my greed last week. This always used to happen to me when I was a kid. I used to try and fit the whole digested biscuit when I could still eat them into my mouth in one go and would end up cutting. So because I talk a lot as a teacher slash in life, people think I have a big mouth, but I actually have quite a physically small face. Like I can't, I, three fingers is your lot behave. Um, and uh, yeah, so biscuits are often kind of too wide for me. <laughs> so first world problem, I slid a biscuit in and it's like it was too wide. So I, I have a I have a cookie related injury. You tragic, tragic, tragic individual, Luke. All right. So yeah, so uh, menage, very common word as well. Don't confuse menage and manage. Okay. Um, good. Um, next up, we have ouvert, ouvert, okay? So we had fermé, and now we've got ouvert, or feminine ouverte. So ouvert um, is a step that basically will often end, when we mean open, we mean that at the end of it, the, it's the position of the legs. You're not closing it effectively. So, you know, dancers, you know, you're si sans fermé, as opposed to you're si sans ouvert and, all, ouvert and all this business. So it's just to remind you that it means open. It still completely works in French. Most of you would have done some form of secondary school, high school French. You know, le magasin est ouvert, the shop is open, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. Um, good. Um, I mean, again, if you're talking in French with dancers and you're talking about somebody's second and what, what condition their hips are in and hip opening, you know, you can say, ils sont très ouverts and all this business. Of course you can, but that's like, you know, quite whatever. Niche. Good. We're then into the P's. Plié. Plié. Not plié. 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 Okay. And again, like other things in French, if you were talking about that as a verb, so tu plies. To plea, you know, um, you don't tend to hear this as much in non-French ballet, fret in ballet, but it's plié tendu, plié tendu. That's the opposite. Okay, so plié tendu, plié tendu. Okay, um, uh, yeah, plié like pliers to bend. Most people pretty much know that one. So if I were you. What would I be looking for? What would I be looking for? I would be looking for a reflexive usage or I would be looking for a figurative usage because obviously that's what your Luke has told you to do. So plié is to bend, yeah? Okay? Bend, 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 bend. Any figurative usages, anything at all. So, yeah, the, the, the kind of, the, you know, what do you call it? The sofa bed folds and unfolds. You know, le lit se plie et se déplie. Se dépli, unfold. A dépliant is the word for a leaflet. I think that's the word for a leaflet in Italian as well. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong, which I think is really weird. But yeah, so dépliant is to unfold. Notice the debt again. So, um, se plier. Um, I mean, you could say he folded himself in two, kind of, you know, il se plie en deux. Se plier à quelque chose is to basically 
um, to give into. Like it's this idea of you fold yourself to the thing. You 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 allow yourself to be m moved and you know influenced by something. Um, uh, céder devant, yeah, to submit. Okay. So uh, les militaires plient sous, uh, sous le commandement. So soldiers always defer to orders. Yeah, you fold. Um, like in card games, right? I fold. I'm done. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, I have a really interesting relationship with the word fold. Because uh, I really like folding clothes. So the word used to be such a source of happiness. But when I was, my legs were strong enough to go riding all the time, which isn't the case anymore. Um, my lovely friend Dawn Dima, Dawn Dima, DD, amazing uh, alliteration. When I used to go over jumps on a horse, she'd go, fold! <laughs> because there's something suicidal about me that used to love the feeling of when you get the horse jumps and just being a bit way, rather than you obviously have to kind of fold with the movement of the horse. So that fold would often be preceded by a naughty word. But yeah, so um, fold for me is an interesting word. But plié, se déplie. Um, yeah. Uh, and to fold into how many times? So I fold it twice, fold it three times. is se plier en deux, en trois, en quatre. It's with an en. All right. Go and look at plié. Not a lot else you can do. Fold. All right. Good. Ça se déplie is probably what you should be getting in, the, in your mouth. So it, it unfolds. Ça se déplie. All right? Dancers plié, not pl uh, plié. Okay? Um, pas. Un pas. Right. So un pas is a step. So this has two usages in French. In ballet, you've either got pas de plus a number, which is referring to how many people are dancing, or I suppose un grand pas, like referring to like an impressive piece of show off kind of thing. Um, or pas and then another word meaning the type of step that you're doing, the movement. All right. So let's run through a cu couple of them. So firstly, pas in French is still the word pas. You will have come across it as well for the word not. Dancers and French speakers. So, for example, I love you, je vous aime. I don't love you, je vous aime pas, or je ne vous aime pas, with a cheeky no, all right? Um, it is also a step. If you think across to Latin and you think of passo doble, which again is an anglicised pronunciation, <laughs> passo doble, um, a pas is a step. So if we went across to all the times that we have pas in um, uh, in um in French, in ballet, there are an absolute crap load. Let's talk quickly first about the usages of pas in French, and then let's talk about the different usages of pas in ballet and what the other word after pas means in French, all right? It's good to have a plan. So pas is obviously not, not, not a step, okay? So take two steps forward, yeah? Alors, fais deux pas, or fais deux pas en avant, en avant, yeah? Um, the footsteps, I can hear footsteps. J'entends des pas, okay? Footprints, yeah, yeah, des pas. Um, the pace, yeah? Press, on va presser le pas, you know, we're going to up the pace. Can you see the link between pas and pace? Um, uh, au pas is the walk, like particularly in, you know, um, horse riding, for example. You know, the speed of the, the, the gait, we call it in riding, so your gaits are walk, trot, canter, gallop. Weirdly in French, canter is galloper. <laughs> so the first time you ride in France, if you've only ever ridden in England, I remember they were like, oh gallop, on va galloper. And I'd be like, what are we going to gallop here? You know, we'll die. Oh, oh just canter. Um, yeah, so that would be the pas, a step, a stride, an interval, you know, um, figuratively again, a backward step, you know, we spoke about arrière a moment ago, arrière pas. It's really close to here. A deux pas d'ici, deux pas, trois pas, deux pas d'ici. It's just not far, two steps from here. You know, you know, just a stone's throw, as we would say. Okay, um, lovely. Very, 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 very common expression. 
you know, we're going to go faster on the allonger le pas. Remember, à allonger from our arm position. So we are going to, you know, increase the, the, the step. The pas de calais is another good one as well. So the pas would, in pas de calais, you think it's saying not calais, but it's basically saying the administrative, the administrative area around Paris, around Calais. So that's another good one. Right, now let's look at all the pas de words in ballet that we have and what they mean and how we would pronounce them properly. And let's hope that I don't get out of order. I need to talk about pied, I need to talk about piqué, I need to talk about penché, I need to talk about passé. There's a lot of words I don't want to miss. Right, this might get out of order. Right, so firstly, um, uh, yeah, so you have couru, which is a C word, which I possibly should have mentioned earlier, but I, I decided to put it after pas. So you have something en couru, or, you know, pas de ou pas couru, which is a kind of leapy kind of running step, often in a big side movement before doing something bigger, a sort of a preparatory step to, to do something bigger. Um, couru, OU, so can you say for me couru? So in the same word here, you've got your, <coughs> pardon me, you've got your chest, your chest and your mouth, couru. So couru, you know, which is often, amongst other things, it's like the bore step, like digga, 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 digga. You know, um, that is couru. So couru, let me hear you say that. Couru, couru, not couru, couru. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, so pas de deux, pas de trois, pas de quatre is the amount of people dancing. So when you have a man and a woman, I'm not being heteronormative or gendered, when you have two ballet dancers in traditional roles, um, dancing together, um, that is the pas de deux. So within ballet, there is a discipline. Like I said, my friend Chris is a great teacher of this. Pas de deux is when you a guy will be turning the girl, you know, her leg will be in a certain position. She's not going to smash into him with his knee when she turns round and all of this business. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so that is called the pas de deux. That's the male and the female dancing together normally in a romantic context. Pas de trois, three dancers. Yeah, uh, pas de quatre. So the swans. And all the legs and all the jumping. Um, that is the pas de quatre. The signets, all right? Good. We then have, what are the ones that we got? So, pas de basque, basque. Not basque, pas de basque. Pas de basque, basque. So, basque is the French pronunciation of uh, the region, which is between France and Spain, which is used to be quite politically sensitive which is a fascinating linguistic heritage because it's the only European language which has zero link to any other European language. It's an Indo... Well, we're all by definition in the Indo-Eurasian sort of language family, but basically it is linked to India in a weird way. Um, and that culture, that Basque culture, is still very present in the north of Spain and the south of France. Within the Basque community, so Basque is one of the recognised uh, Spanish territory languages. I don't, I, it would be politically incorrect to keep calling it Basque because I believe in the way that to some Welsh it's preferred if you would say, you know, Camaraig rather than Welsh. Um, I believe it's preferable to say, I think it's Uskera. I'm not sure how you, you know, because you just say El País Basco in Spanish, but it is the region. Yeah, so a Basque is Basque is the region of Spain and, and the bottom of France. Um, I used to live in, where did I live? Moliette's Plage, Les Landes. So the département was kind of near there, which is all right in the middle of it. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, Pyrenees all around there by the Pyrenees and just above there, it's all very Basque. And there is still evidence of the language, very much on both sides, French and Spanish sides, a little bit more so in the, on the uh, Spanish side. So when you talk about your Basque step, which a lot of people despise, <laughs> which is a basic step, which is a movemented step where you are basically, you're there, okay, 
uh, you've got your fit, you've got your slides, you've got your rond de you've got your change of weight, you've got your recovery on the other side. You know, it's from one side to the next, but once there's something else. Dancers know it very, very well. Um, not a personal fan of that one. Um, you are basically, in a classical court way, imitating a step that was used in dance from that area. And dances spread across Europe and became popular. So in the same way that we have popular music and culture that spread that way, years ago, we didn't obviously have the sales or the downloads of CDs and, you know, Spotify and things and iTunes. So dances would spread culturally. Oh, people are dancing this way. People are dancing this way. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. You know, do the locomotion. So where you'd have like a waltz, which would spread or you'd have a tarantella or you'd have like different dances that would spread culturally from different places um the next step dances you will completely completely know and it's the same thing so par de bore you know behind side front as it's often known yeah um which is literally that you know non-dancers so step step across rejoin the pair step across rejoin um you know um one of the most unbelievably classical combos you could do. Tombe, fall onto your foot. Pas de bourrée, prepare behind, step across, put your foot in front. Pirouette. Tombe, pas de bourrée, pirouette, pirouette. Um, so bourrée, we'll talk about in just a second. But bourrée in pas de bourrée has got nothing to do with the French meaning of the word bourrée, because bourrée is to stuff. Yeah, or you could be drunk, you could be bourrée. Um, Pas de bourrée is a, the step, the dance from that region, which is, I think, oh, where's its status from in t Interview the Vampire? The Auvergne. It's from the Auvergne. Um, so yeah, bourrée, people go, what does bourrée mean? It's the dance from that region. So bourrée is like stuff, fill, bourrée, bourrée, um, cram, ram, um, but also, oh putain, il est bourré, he's completely drunk. Yeah, he's full of alcohol, il est bourré. Um, uh, you know, we're going to get drunk on bas se bourré. You know, um, I wouldn't say se bourré for me personally, I would admit he's, il était bourré. Um, good. We then have a few animals. We have pas de chat. Jump up, land, okay. Light feet across, land, land. Which is cat, cat step, we've already spoken about that. Pas de cheval, which is using when we talk about this position of the leg bending that we spoke about non-dancers and the leg straightening and then catching the floor. We've got that unfolding kind of feeling like a horse, like pff, pff, a horse is going to do that. Pas de cheval. Cheval, guys, dancers, it's still a word in French. Cheval. Yeah, cheval. Pas de cheval. Um, pas de chat, pas de... Pas de trois, pas de quatre, pas de valse, waltz step, valse, waltz, yeah, yeah. We spoke about this earlier with, the, with you know, the, the balancé feeling of the one, two, three, and also there's a specific movement, turning, a lovely turning step where you'd have a lovely epaulement, um, where you've got your pas de valse, and not waltz, valse, because the valse is obviously, you know, waltz in French. Good. On we go. Passé, passé, passé. So passé uh, is... Such an unbelievably hardcore move, common movement, French speakers. Not, I know there's this, pass, is it passé, passé, is it retiré debate, or raccour, raccourci in some methods. But if you are standing on one leg, and the leg that you are not using, the leg that you are using is called your working leg as opposed to your supporting leg, and your working leg is, let's say, out to the side, and then your bottom of your working leg, knee down, is pulled in, and your toe, in a rather beautiful position, is, you know, either just in front, just behind, or just to the side of your knee, depending what you're doing. That is generally your passé. That position there, yeah often known as retiré, which we will get to when we talk about the R. And I'm sure there are various subtleties within. So sometimes people would say, like, the passé would be if you went via that position into something else, like if you've done, like, a really slow adage and then you, like, a slow movement and you developed your leg, you developed your leg and then you brought it through and then you took it back into what's the one that goes behind, arabesque. So some people might call that, like, passé as opposed to retiré, the action of that just literally coming up 
So for example, if you went from out in front into that and back behind, somebody by all means that's far, far more knowledgeable about this, tell me. But there's generally just a kind of, again, an Americanism, an Anglicism, a French influence of what words get used, which words get used. But passé is just literally to pass. Yeah, be very careful, beginner French speakers. It is a verb which can be done with a have or a verb which can be done with a be. So j'ai passé is I spent, so I spent three hours doing this video. Alors moi j'ai passé trois heures. Um, je suis passé with an etre, the verb to be, is I physically passed in front of. So I passed in front of something, je suis passé devant. Devant, what was our word devant? In front of dancers. All right, so yeah, passé can have two things. Le passé, you know, um, obviously a tense, yeah, is obviously, you know, the past. <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah, as in le passé composé, j'ai passé, because it's something that has passed. So in other words, dancers, if you're generally just thinking, do you know what, I'm not going to even change my pronunciation of these words, I'd just be interested to know how much of this is still used in French. Passé is absolutely alive and well, do not worry, all right? Next up, pencher, 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 pencher. A pencher, okay, is a beautiful step where you are going to lean, your body is actually, for once we've spoken about how in control the body is in French, your body is going to lean forward, okay, and you are, your arabesque leg that is behind is then going to come up and up and up, and nowadays you tend to see it very commonly at what we call six o'clock, which is basically supporting leg down and leg fully up behind you. Training methods are different, awareness of hip flexor, strength and flexibility compared to front leg obsession years ago in, in dance training. People are just better trained. Um, it was also, it's just stylistically seen as less vulgar now than it used to be. See excerpt about Sylvie Guillaume. You know, you look at people like Margot Fontaine, who is just beautiful and just diminutive and, you know, but the legs and the extension, as we call it, it's not like whack you know i mean i dare say it might have been able to but it's just seen as more ladylike in other words your giselle or your aurora you know in, in the sleeping beauty your princesses and your beautiful peasant girls it just wasn't seen as the done thing when a guy has got his hands on you to lift your leg to the point that it is 100 percent yeah so is it from training is it from social conditioning that we now accept that kind of thing a little bit more. I mean, remember, there was a time when ballet dancers danced when it was like <gasps> the bottom of their leg was on display. <gasps> um, uh, you know, but for whatever reason, that is called a penche. All right. Pon, 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 pon. Not penche. There's no hard CH in French. Not penche. Yeah, penche. Penche. All right. Penche is to tilt, to lean, to incline. Uh, so, yeah. You can do it even as a non-dancer, you know, so she leans her head to see out the window, you know, elle penche la tête. I leant my whole body forward, alors je me suis penché en avant. Um, it weighed into something, as in, you know, it leant towards, um, um, it goes towards, you know, uh, something penche against somebody, it leans toward. If you have a little preference for... This will often be sexually, if you have a little preference for something or other, it'd be like a penchant. So he's got a little thing for it, a little leaning towards. He tends to like this kind of thing. She tends to like this kind of thing. It's known as a penchant. Um, lovely. We prefer, we go towards, alors nous penchons uh, pour une solution uh, plus douce. We're, going, we're leaning towards a, a softer solution. Yeah? Good. So, uh, se pencher, again, it's just you to move the upper body towards something. Um, se pencher sur quelque chose is phrase ABC verb, guys, to be interested in something. So s'intéresser à something or étudier. Yeah, so he's really into, he's going towards that, he's leaning towards that, he's, he's concentrating his efforts on that. Good. Pencher, pencher, pencher. Good, let's keep going. Petit and petite, I don't care what you do, but the word is peu and premier. There's no premier or petit, all right? Petit. Uh, Roland Petit was a French choreographer married to a very cool uh, French dancer, actually, 
an amazing, amazing, amazing French dancer. Uh, Zizi Jean Marie. Um, uh, yeah, um, putsi, putsi, putsi. It means small. So if a movement is done, you know, like a putsi, putsi battement, like a small beat, you know, putsi allegro, all of this business. But if you just want to add a little bit of French class to your ballet, putsi, not petty. All right. Pied, we've spoken about before. The foot, the foot, pied, coup de pied. Lovely. Um, French learners, you would know that word already. You know, uh, you've the pied. So if we went to a sort of figurative usage of pied, um, uh, what could we bring in? The foot of something will quite often be the pied. You know, um, uh, you know, um, like the root of something, the end of something. Uh, at the foot of the bed, yeah, you know, au pied de son lit, you know, uh, to have somebody, you know, the, uh, au pied de l'escalier, au pied du mur, like you've got me up against the wall kind of thing. Common, 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 all right? Lovely. Next up, we have pique. So pique, lovely step, lovely, lovely, lovely step. Refer to what we were saying earlier about manège. So pique comes from the French to prick, <laughs> sting, nip, um, also can be to steal. So when you are piquing, it's one of the ways in which your foot is getting onto the floor. So let's just imagine that we are standing in our position where one foot is in front of the other, we hopefully turned out and one foot is in front. To get onto our toes, be it our full toes, or bit the dummy point that we were talking about, you obviously need a movement that is going to get, allow that foot to then have the weight transferred. One of those is, as we said, is the roulevé that we'll talk about later, which is when you kind of push up onto your toes. One of which is your pique, which is basically where you are going to extend via whichever method your leg with that foot already prepared and in the position um, pointed and place said point or point on the floor and then slide into a demi point and then step straight onto the pointed leg. And that is largely a PK. Okay? PK is a jab or a prick. So if you think about it, um, and we all know plenty of those. So uh, if you think about it, um, PK, a piqûre in French is a needle. Oh putain, ça m'a piqué. Something, you know, stung me. Um, really common. It's this pointed foot that's going onto the floor. Yeah? Think of the sliding movements we've described or the bouncing movements we've described. Yeah, pointy foot straight onto the floor. So sting, bite, you know, a moustique, uh, la pique, like a, a, a mosquito stung him. Um, ooh, ooh, ça pique. Like, oh, it's quite fizzy. It's quite, you know, um, acid, acidic. It's quite, you know, bitter. Um, ça pique les yeux. Yeah, there was a French shampoo for ages. It's called Petit Dop, and its slang, its slogan was um, "pique par les yeux," like doesn't you know, sting your eyes. Um, uh, pique is to pinch, nab. Yeah, nick. Um, uh, yeah, uh, pique an animal would be to put it down. Yeah, euthanasia. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We also then have. Pose. So in a similar concept to your pique turn, generally your pose, again, you are putting the foot down. Pose, turn, for want of a better description. Pose is to put. So similarly with the verb mettre, so pose, pose, okay? Mettre is to put with an M. So j'ai mis, je vais mettre, pose to put. I'm going to put the key on the desk. Je vais poser la clé, or les clés. Um, you know, sur la table au bureau, uh, je vais mettre same, same, same. Yeah, so pose. Pirouette, pirouette, pirouette. Have we fallen in love with the OU yet? Ooh, 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 pirouette. Um, standing on one leg, turning around, for want of a better way of describing it to the dancers. Um, a spin. A pirouette. Now, this is only used in French to mean this. You can, however, make it a verb, as I said earlier. Oui, tu l'as pirouetté. Uh, pirouette. 
don't become somebody that, like I said, suddenly starts using this French for the sake of using it. So, you know, don't be at your ballet class in New York and suddenly go, well, I'm going to do to pirouette, uh, you know, but just know that this is how it's said. Um, good. Uh, and again, the only time that could possibly be used in French other than to mean the spin, you know, would be if you're if you did an about turn, but you're very figuratively sort of saying, yeah, we did a total spin around, we did a total turn, it was all for this or this or Brexit or whatever, 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 and then he completely changed his mind. You know, that could be called the pirouette, French speakers, French speaking team, yeah? Or an evasive reply, like to get out of talking about something, you know, to kind of slip your way out of, um, you know, talking about something. That could be a pirouette, all right? Good, 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 good. Um, lovely. Point, pointe, les pointes. So les pointes are basically your point. So the, the point is um, the bottom of your foot without the toe, the tip of the toes. And then these are your points, you know. So to be on point, as we say in, um, in, in English. But les pointes are also point shoes. Yeah, that's you know, the word for ballet slipper or ballet shoe is um, uh, chausson. Yeah, nice word, like slipper, chausson. Um, we wouldn't say chaussure de danse. We, maybe for Latin or tap shoe, we'd say, you know, claquette. Um, but yeah, you pointe. But pointe is obviously the action of pointing the toe. Known classically as good toes, naughty toes, good toes, naughty toes. <laughs> so pointe, okay, um, uh, is the action of, 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 of pointing that out, okay? Um, if you want, this is again another thing where you'll see, um, you know, uh, you'll see um, people, you know, using this verb as a kind of command form. OK, um, 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 you know, you know, point your toes kind of thing. Um, you know, this is this is. Um, yeah, this is this is something that you that you that you you'd come across and see quite a lot. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, as opposed to what else is that I've got in my notes? Um, where's my point of notes? Oh, I did lots of point of notes. Oh, good. I am pleased. So, um, so, yeah, courtesy of, uh, courtesy of word reference. So the, um, whatever, the spires point up, you know, they point, you know, upwards. Um, something sticks out, you know, point, um, to clock in, to clock in, yeah. Um, you know, uh, point. You know, you point your card, yeah, to point when you arrive, okay? Um, uh, weirdly, seasons, like high periods, you can say, like, let's, you know, saison point and all this business. Um, uh, se pointer, uh, to turn up at, another way of saying, se rendre à, arriver à. Yeah, I arrived at the party, je, me, uh, je suis arrivé à la fête, je me suis rendu à la fête, je me suis pointé à la fête. Um, you know, he turned up, he said pointe, he turned up, he turned up at three o'clock. Punaise, he said pointe at 15 heures. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Um, don't confuse pointe with, um, yeah, the, if you're using, um, so pointe there, but you've also got, hang on, have I put that in the notes? Um, Oh God, is that turned up? I needed to add the, this to the list. I'm going to try and add all of these in the description box early, later. So I don't want to mention something and then not have it in the description to mention. Um, you've also got a word, um, 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 pointu, which surprises you because you want to think of the verb pointe, but the past will often be, or the adjective form will be, point, the adjective form, sorry, can be pointu. So for example, um, uh, pointed, you know, anything pointed with like a sort of a feeling to it that's pointed, that's pointu, okay, which I know is odd. 
uh, because you will think, why have we got from point two to point A? But just learn it, advanced learners, all right? Um, if somebody has an accent on point two, they are shti, yeah? They are from the north of, of France, okay? Um, um, parler point two. I wouldn't say parler point two. I'd say he's on accent point two. Um, it's a bit... That way of speaking is, dis is described as being point two. Um, lovely, 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 lovely. On we go. How many are we on? 50? I think we can do this in three videos. Lovely. Promenade. 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 Yeah, so a promenade is a lovely thing. It is, for example, when you'll be in a position, leg somewhere, and you are going to turn round, okay? One leg is on the floor, the standing leg, the other one is, is in the air. You know, like, for example, in an attitude behind, you know, or an arabesque or whatever, and you are just going to take yourself a little walk on the spot, okay? It's not a pirouette, it's not a turn, okay? You're just sort of, your heel is going heel, 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 turn in, turn in, or, you know, effectively the other way. Um, you are, yeah, you are turning gradually, you're just going for a little walk, you're just saying, look at my position. I'm just going to turn around, my little position. That is a promenade. Promenade. So the verb, se promener, se promener, and then again, when you go to the long form, like we changed with to throw, je me promène. So French learners, I'm going to go for a walk. Je vais marcher, which we also have in French, in ballet. Marcher, je vais me promener. Downbeat, promener. I'm walking, je me promène. Je me promène, all right? Good, 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 good. Um, we might say preparation, préparation, you know, uh, you know, um, the initial thing before another step. So this will be your préparation to then whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. Um, good. Um, before a pirouette, for example. You know, so you might not even say fourth. You might just say préparation, pirouette. Yeah. Pirouette we've talked about, we've spoken about, da, 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 da. port de bras we've spoken about. Um, uh, placement's possibly worth mentioning, so placement, placement, same word. Okay. Um, remember the word place, guys. Place is always difficult in French, so if you say my favourite place, you'll be talking about endroit, E-N-D-R-O-I-T. If you're talking about, so my favourite, oh, I know, a really nice place that sells whatever, Mexican food. Um, I was going to have a Mexican this evening and then my, um, a meal, not the person. And then my neighbour, Uma, brought some really lovely, uh, she's from Nepal and she brought some really lovely food around. So bye bye Mexican. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so what were you we talking about just before that? <laughs> So a place, a place, my favourite, oh, I know there's a really good place that does Mexican food, an endroit, E-N-D-R-O-I-T. Um, a, um, everything is back in its place, you know, everything's, you know, back in its place, as a place, um, in place of, au lieu de, so do you remember in the middle, in ballet, uh, after the bar was often called, in French method, was milieu, in the middle, au milieu. Um, uh, so, yeah, three words for place. Place, endroit, milieu. Port de bras, we've spoken about. Port de bras, port de bras, the carriage of the arm. The carriage of the arm, the carrying of the arm, the movement of using the word, whatever. Port itself is so busy in French, I can't even tell you. Porter to carry or to wear, okay? So, for example, the wearing of masks recently was a quite a big issue, wasn't it? You know, that was obviously le port. You know, Damask, um, it can be a harbour, randomly, the same word, you know, port, yeah, port, okay. Um, uh, if you have um, postage, yeah, so the postage, because it's the carriage of this letter years ago, had the fact it's going to be carriage, that could be uh, le port, uh, franchir, you know, stamp, tamponné, um, the bearing, so, you know, the way that somebody holds their head. Yeah, the port de tête. We talk about the port de bras, the port de tête. Okay? Uh, um, à bon port, safe haven. Got home safely, à bon port. To arrive home, bel et bien. Bel et bien, well and truly. Safe and sound, or arriver à bon port. Arriver à bon port. 
okay? Like a harbour, a safe, safe harbour, all right? Um, good, 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 good. We then have, it's exciting, we're nearly done. Um, Q. So we've got quatrième, the fourth position, quatrième. I think most people would only... It's funny, you don't tend to use the no numerical positions even in, in English. Would, would somebody say, we'll go into quatrième? No, we'll just say wide fourth or something. That's, that's French that tends to be reserved for French teachers or French method. You wouldn't, you know. Quatre uh, raccourci is shortened. Now, I recommend and beg, so raccourci, raccourci. Use as an expression more in... Weirdly, in French methods or the or English syllabus, I don't really hear many Russians say raccourci. Perhaps I'm wrong. Correct me. But um, yeah, um, so also known as like a retire, the retire, you re, you retire, all right. Um, but there's other steps which can be done, like coupé jeté raccourci, like drop spring land, drop spring land, a bit like your ballonet kind of thing. Um, so um, raccourci. Guys that are doing really well with your French, you want to be on an absolute list and mission to find verbs which contain other adjectives and other nouns within them. So, for example, long, long, to lengthen, allonger, white, blanc, to whiten, blanchir. Um, um, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I got these whitened recently and to quote um, a dear friend, they're aggressively white. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. Um, raccourci. Uh, um, long word, longer words that contain other words. So what did we have for earth early when your foot is on the ground? A terre. To land, atterrir. Yeah? Atterrir. You're going to land, tu vas atterrir. Um, or to bury somebody. Hopefully you're not going to do that in ballet. Enterrer into the earth. So be on the hunt, guys, for verbs that contain nouns and other adjectives that you're going to convert into a verb. So raccourcir is obviously, obviously contains the word court, short, okay? Lovely, 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 raccourci. Um, ah, one of the favourite corrections, relevé. Yeah, upon a relevé, when you basically go up onto your demi point, the action of going from flat up onto the, you know, Demi, or even the point, the relevé. Relevé, relevé. Tu vas, je relève. So, relevé, so any verb in French which ends levé. So, je me lève, je soulève, je relève. The verbs, the infinitive forms are relevé, soulevé, um, levé. I'm going to do a video on the difference between relevé, soulevé, and levé because it's all a little bit subtle. But basically, when dancers, you talk about on a relevé, relevé. Yeah? Yeah? Okay? There's no such tenses. There's no such pronunciation as relevé. Okay? So this is basically to pick up, to lift. You can lift something else. Le jardinier relève uh, les pots renversés. So he puts right, he picks up the knocked over pots. Renversé. Interesting that that's a choice of words because we've got a renversé coming in a minute, haven't we? Or a renversé. Um... <clears throat> The mother picks up her child fallen on the ground. So, relève, like picks up something that's fallen over, is often used with relevé. Um, you know, I I raised my head. Alors, it's not soulève la tête, particularly, you know, j'ai je, je, relevé la tête. So, yeah, raised very commonly. All right? Relevé, relevé, relevé. Relève, verb, relevé. All right? So, presumably then, Oh, and yes, so we've got relevé long. So when we talk about standing still and the leg is going to develop up and come forward, if your leg is starting straight on the floor and it is coming up straight and you are not developing it forward, that is a relevé long, a slow rise, okay? Lovely. Long being slow, long, all right? L-E-N-T, long. I know that sounds very similar to long, which is long. Get over it. Almost done, people. Almost done. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You probably aren't tired because you probably watch these in several cups of tea over a couple of days or even weeks. It's me that's done them in one go. Lovely. Um, 
renverser. This is a beautiful step, okay? So one of the few steps where you are really off balance, where you are allowed to almost allow a cheeky little bit of contemporary into ballet. So you're there and you're for often, often, for example, falling behind, so your leg will come. People often go, it's an attitude that you then put your foot down. No, 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 no. So basically what you want is this feeling, not all the time, but your foot is, you're doing this rond de jean. We've got Ron on the left. It's coming around the side, you're carrying your leg around, you, your weight of your body then goes round, it change of weight, and then you step and fall off it into something else. From the French to spill. Renverse, 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 no, 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 renverse, all right? Completely, 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 completely still used, yeah? So, uh, you know, I spill wine, you know, j'ai renversé le vin. Oh, quelle horreur, quelle horreur. Um, verse is to pour, by the way, to pour. So, verse is to pour. Aquarius, like in star signs, not that I really believe it, but um, verso. So, renverse, I'm so clumsy, I've spilled vinegar on the tablecloth, said somebody. Alors, quelle maladroite, alors j'ai renversé du vinaigre sur la nappe. To knock something over, renversé, lovely, 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 lovely. You know, um, uh, to knock a, down like a, you know, a pedestrian is the example they've given. Alors, il a, il a, il a renversé un piéton. Good, 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 good. We've spoken about retirer, yeah, to pull all of this business, the leg going up at the side. Ah, oh, what a beautiful one. Reverence. If you want to listen to a beautiful French song, type Véronique Sanson, S-A-N-S-O-N, and put, put in reverence, my bow. So a reverence is a... I just need a drink of water, one second. Ah. Oh, if I'm not warmed up, my knees can't even move. So, reverence. This is an interesting concept in French because it's kind of the same word for bow and curtsy. Curtsy is a, <laughs> etymologically from courtesy, courtesy. I don't know if you ever made that connection. So, basically, um, most words which end in N and C and E in French are feminine. So, uh, faire une reverence is to bow or to curtsy. To bow specifically, okay, will often be s'incliner la tête, to incline the head, s'incliner la tête. Um, it can obviously be, you know, very reverent towards somebody or deference, you know, it can obviously be the feeling or the, you know, the attitude of due respect to somebody, you know, reverence, which is kind of the origin of the term anyway. But yeah, so um, uh, faire, faire la reverence, faire une, une reverence, you know, uh, you know, a respectful gesture, you know, but like I said, if it's bow, you want to specifically mean bow. If you say a guy does it and a woman does it, we tend to assume that the man is doing the bow and the woman is doing the curtsy. Um, uh, ballet has a specific sort of reverence pattern that's very, very lovely. You, you know, you gesture, lovely low shoulder, you gesture to where you you know, your, your audience, your orchestra, whatever's going on, your partner, you know. Um, but generally, and I'm not being gender politic, but if you've got like a man, you'd assume with a word that it meant bow, and with a woman, you'd assume curtsy. All right? Good, good, good. I think we're on to rond. So rond, known commonly in English as rond de jambe, or rond de jambe, is basically a round movement, a passage of the leg, either à terre, as we spoke about, you know, or en l'air. So on the floor, it means if you brought your foot forward as far as it will go, okay, you are then, like a clock needle, going to take it round to the side, if necessary, round to the back, depends whether it's a full rond de jambe or it's whether just that's the movement in the choreography, or in the air, however you get it up, yeah, relevé long or développé, you're going to carry it round or up here, you know, <laughs> you know, grand rond. Um, and that means round, a circle, a ring. There are other words for rings. If you were, some of us aren't anymore, but if you were, 
Married, you'd be wearing an alliance, a wedding ring, Lord of the Rings, Anneau, Seigneur des Anneaux, um, un rang, like, you know, en rang, to do something en rang would be to get, keep going round, a jolly rang, you know, drawing pretty circles. Um, uh, that means something to me, jolly rang. Is that a children's, is that a bookshop or a children's clothing company? Am I being really dumb? Um, I think I'm being dumb. Um, oh no, yeah, I've realised what it is. It's la jolie ronde. So a ronde, rather than a ronde, the shape, is like a grouping, like a, like a, a dance around grouping. And la jolie ronde is a children's language program for Spanish and French work me talking work crap don't worry about it yeah I was gonna say I thought I'd thought about that um uh yes um uh a ronde as well incidentally because notes are feminine in French um is a semi-brief so like quaver crotchet quaver minim semi-brief that kind of thing um, good. So a rond is basically uh, your the jambe is your leg. So rond de jambe, rond de jambe. So it's basically a going round of the leg. All right. Um, if you use the word rond anywhere else in French, be careful, because if you call a person rond, okay, you are you can well. There's different things. You're either saying they're slightly fat again, slightly chubby, like we talked about with enveloppe earlier. Or we're saying they're a bit drunk, they're a bit rounded, you know, things aren't, the sides aren't straight, it's gone a bit, you know, you know, they're off the head. Um, it's an old word for a, an, like a coin, because duh, coins are round. Um, but yeah, but mainly, um, you know, um, uh, so tourn en rond is to go round. Um, so he continues to en rond, like he keeps going round, or ça, but ça tourne par rond, ironically, is the opposite. That means that doesn't turn round, that means there's a problem. So there's something going wrong. Any other expressions? Um, um, uh, yeah, ne pas avoir en rond, like I'm broke, être fauché, you know, I've got no money. Old word for, you know. Um, well, it's a tourne par rond. The idea of it not turning, the gears, the the cogs aren't turning properly. So somebody's, you know, got a screw loose. Um, uh, what else do we have as expressions that I... I mean, I read loads, but I don't want to give you them all because I don't really use them all. Um, uh, a round number, yeah, chiffre rond. Um, uh, the main one is plump and chubby in order this business, or... The adjective round or rounded is rond or rond. So, but here, a rond de jambe is a noun. It is a going round of the leg, all right? Lovely. Um, royal. We've spoken about a royal before. This is one of our jumps where instead of doing our change, change, we'll do where we are and then we'll, so we'll beat where we were and then we'll land behind. Or in front, depending which way you think about it with the foot. Lovely, on to S, we're nearly free. Sauter, sauter, sauter. Um, although we're nearly done, I think I'm going to have a little pause, because we've done an hour and ten-ish, um, and I'm going to have a little pause, a little snackette, so that I end on a high. Yeah? So that we can have a nice, big, leaping solo at the end, and we're all good. All right? <laughs> 